Hello, everybody, and welcome to our once a month Blue Canoe Lab with students and teachers. Uh, everybody's a learner in the room. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, please find the chat. That's just something that we're going to use today to share questions and answers. And we can just start by saying hello from and wherever you're calling in from. So hello from always Maryland. That's mine. I'd love to know where you're calling in from. So find that chat. Chattanooga. Yeah. Chattanooga. What I love about these once a month Thursday evenings is we invite our Blue Canoe users as well as all of our great color vowel teachers into the room. And it's this day when we all get to enjoy being learners together. And I say that really sincerely that um, I, and maybe I should ask the teachers to say this sincerely. Teachers, why do you come to these Thursday nights? Because learners, we get together every Thursday night, these teachers, and we always do something together. So I'd like to know if anyone has an insight, a teacher, uh, about what they're learning about language or what they have learned. Are there any kind of, anyone want to volunteer a thought of what they've just a thing that they've learned recently about language and why we come together like this? I learn something every time. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> um, I, I find out why people have trouble learning languages, which is very interesting to me. Yeah. Because I, I like to figure out what in the brain is keeping, is blocking the language learning process and how to get around that blockage. So this is just fascinating. And we do, we take a brain-based approach to what we're doing um, every time we come together. So everyone be ready to use our hands. We're going to go ahead and warm up because I think it's been a while since we warmed up with the color vowel chart. And so I will use a screen share here and we'll come down to, ah, this one right here. I like this one. Um, let's go ahead and use it in Actually, stop just one moment. Give me a moment. We'll warm up some phrases today. And so for this one, if you could go ahead and mute yourselves, we will warm up with phrases together as soon as it comes up. Hello. <laughs> this is a black screen, isn't it? Feels so fancy. I'd better stop that black screen. We're going to give that another try. Let's do that one more time, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Ta -da. All right, so we'll do a phrase based chant. Some of you have heard this recently and for some of you it's been a while, but either way it's fun and it's going to be like a triangle. I'm going to say it, you're going to say it and we'll keep saying it together and we'll just work our way around the chart right up here like this, ready? It's me, your turn, it's me, green tea, it's me. It's simple, your turn, it's simple. Silver pin, it's simple, stop. You see how this works? I'm going to give you a phrase, you repeat it. We say silver pin, I, right? Next one, it's great, it's great. Gray day, it's great. Together, together, red pepper together. At, uh, I like it. I like it. White tie. I like it. At last. At last. Black cat. At last. Come on. Come on. Olive sock. Come on. Stand up. Go ahead. Stand up. A cup of mustard. Stand up. I'm not joking, right? <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Purple shirt, that's perfect. And you can sit down if you stood up. Um, so this is just a little brief introduction to color vowels. Can I see a raise of hands? For whom was this new, just using color vowels? Is anybody new to the color vowel chart tonight or today? Brand new? We all know it a little bit? Great. And Gilson, I want to say hello. Are you raising your hand or are you saying hello? Hello. Okay, great to see you. Hi, Gyro. Nice to see you too. Wonderful. So with the color vowel chart, um, we can we can warm up with the rest of these. I forgot that my animations are a little bit different. So we can come over here to finish up. Okay. Um, a couple of others that I like to warm up with would be, um, it's you. <laughs> it's you. Blue moon, it's you. And I like it. I like it. White 
tie. I like it. Wonderful. Today's topic is uh, a question that was recently raised by one of our users, a very good question. And the question is, how can I know where the stress is in a word? And I think that's a, a great question. Um, and I'm going to ask a couple of follow-up questions and invite teachers to come in on this. Uh, but one of the questions I would ask to understand this question is, are we talking about written words or are we talking about spoken words, right? So a lot of times when we think, I wanna know where the stress is in a word, it's because we're looking at a new word and we want to know. But tonight, I hope, and today, if you're, if you're in today, um, I hope you'll also start thinking, how can I tell where the stress is when I listen to a word? So we'll spend just a couple minutes on each of those, okay? If you're looking at a word, uh, you have a couple of options. One is that you can know a lot about words. And sometimes we do know something about words, maybe the Latin and Greek parts of the words. And then you know some rules. Does anybody know any of the rules? And this would go for teachers or students. Are there any rules here that help us know where the stress is in these words? Or any background knowledge? And Dr. Barr, I'll have you wait a little bit. <laughs> so she'll just put her head here. And, um, but I'll ask, do we know any rules that will help us know where the, where the stress is in these words? Two syllable nouns on the first syllable. Two syllable nouns on the first syllable. So like this one is preface, like that? Yeah, but that's a, that's a verb. So two syllable verb probably on the second syllable. Ah, so you're thinking of words like maybe convict and convict. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, those are, that's a nice rule for those, definitely. Um, can you think of any, from the words we see here, what kind of rules can we apply, if any? For example, we can take the T-I-O-N and there's a certain rule we can, that a lot of us, you know, if you spend time in your head and you think equation, what are some other Jean words? T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, go ahead and put them in the chat. Let's do that, okay? Iti, iti. Shun or shun, we have nation, yeah, information, justification. Let's try those as we go down. You're looking at the chat. Five more, let's have some more, good. Oh, lots of great words here. Uh huh. <laughs> so if I look in the chat now and I start up at information, <laughs> it's moving. We have information. You can repeat after me. I'll catch the words. Here we go. Information. Nation. Nation. Information. Justification. 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 Substitution. Substitution. Precision. Precision. Even a long one. Syllabification. Syllabification. What do we notice? Where's the stress in all of these words? What's our nice rule? The penultimate syllable? Yeah, the syllable just before the yeah, T-I-O-N right. or the S-I-O-N, right? So that's a nice, easy, easy to remember rule. When we go back, are there any other rules that you know already? Can you type them into the chat? Because, you know, it's nice to have a couple of handy rules that actually work. <laughs> and the T-I-O-N ending is a nice one. Somebody mentioned itty, I think, like, uh, th thanks, Robin, right? Like what? Itty bitty? No. <laughs> Calamity. <laughs> Capability. Okay, comedy. Right? So, again, that's another one where the syllable just before. But if we return to this list, I, I sort of picked these first ones because they're interesting to me. You know, if we look at this first word and I tell you that it's preface, and then you look at the next one, you could say, well, maybe it's prepper, but it's not, right? It's prepare. So it certainly helps to know possibly uh, in some cases, whether it's a noun or a verb. Um, but if you're just looking at it and you look at those first three letters, Sometimes that could be quite misleading. You really don't know what you're looking at unless you already know the word. So is there a trick for knowing where the stress is? Um, is this, is this leopard? Where are the syllables anyway? How do we know, right? Uh, where's the stress in this word? 
hierarchy or hierarchy, white tie hierarchy or olive sock hierarchy, you might not be able to hear it, right? And so maybe you're also not sure. Is this predator or predator or predator? So in other words, it's there's no way, of, huh? I, I encountered a, a biologist who actually says predator as something that predates uh -huh. and predator is the way I pronounce it. And she said, no, no, that's a, that's a different word. I said, wow, I did not know it had both pronunciations using yeah. this, this special uh, terminology for biology. Yeah, take out your Blue Canoe Dictionary and let's see if it's there. You know, that'd be a nice little test. And we'll be getting to the Blue Canoe Dictionary for sure. And then I just put Chloe in here because my daughter, my 12 year old daughter came to me this week and said, what kind of name is that? You can't tell what, what's, you know, you can't say anything about it. Is it Clo? Is it Chlo? <laughs> she was just very confused by this name that she encountered in a book. So I put it here because she's right. It's, it's impossible to know that it's Chloe unless you already know, right? I just put in two names that confused me when I was her age. Is it Penelope, like envelope, or is it Penelope? Is it Aloysius? I was sure it was Aloysius, but it turns out it's Aloysius. Who would, who would guess that? Right. And so it comes back to how much you know about Latin and Greek. And you may not have a lot of time on your hands to study Latin and Greek, but it can certainly be handy. You know, it can, it can make a difference. Um, but there's another way you can go about it to solve some problems, uh, which is, of course, the Blue Canoe Dictionary or any dictionary, but Blue Canoe makes it easier. Can we all agree on that? <laughs> um, with these words right here, I just thought I'd, I'd show some words that are all related in some fashion. Equal. Uh, equal is not equate, right? So we have equal. What color is equal? Let's just do a little practice on that, by the way. Equal, right? So we have green tea equal, and I will say the word and, and you're not looking at it now, equate, equate. What color? Gray day equate. Now, if I come back and I show you equation, I'm sort of trying to show you time and again that you can't really know unless you either already know how the word sounds or you look it up there's not going to be a one firm set of rules that will always lead you to the right answer because our words come from so many different language backgrounds. We borrow words and our word history makes it very complicated. Okay, so equation is a gray day word, equity is a red word and so forth. So rather than worry about wanting to solve a problem that we don't have a solution to, I want to make a couple of suggestions. Um, one is that simply knowing the dictionary and having it there, you can instantly find out where the stress is and what color it is. And that will give you a large amount of what you need to be understood. Uh, there certainly are some other sounds in here, but knowing where the stress is and what color it is will take you far. And when you look up a word, like here's the first part of equal, it pulls up all of the other words with those same letters. So the, the minute you press in the letter E, Q, U, you're going to see a lot of words and you can look those up as well easily to find their stresses, okay? Um, any other suggestions about what to do with written words besides Latin and Greek word parts? Yeah, please add. I want, I want to um, emphasize that don't just look it up in Blue Canoe, but uh, have Blue Canoe pronounce it for yeah. you. Although some of the pronunciations don't make the vowel long enough, but uh, at least being able to hear the pronunciation uh, once you look it, look it up is going to be helpful. Yeah, in fact, it's worth, maybe I'll take a moment here to model, and I think I have my, my phone here. So let's look at visualizer. Sometimes it's a matter just of making sure we use our tools well enough. So here is my phone. Let's come down a little bit more closely. Is that pretty bright for you? Let's come down a bit. Ah, we can see that a bit more, right? Good. So when we go into the dictionary, if I look up a word like, um, oh, are we going to do this? <laughs> Okay, there we go. So I looked up a word that has two different meanings and two different pronunciations. 
And it's, it's, yes, it's tempting to just look at it and say, oh, now I know. But if you touch, you'll hear. Rose boat. Oh. And then. Boat. So we can do something like this. Watch my hand if you can see my picture here. Rose boat. Boat. Rose. Rose boat. Ode. So you could actually play with those two sound features and listen and use your hand at the same time to start performing the stress there. Okay, that's an easier word, just one syllable there. But what about something like, oh, I don't know, boredom. <laughs> I think my children have been playing with my phone. <laughs> so if we have boredom or a nice word like hierarchy. Um, Nice, let's try that again. Hierarchy. Okay, my phone is unhappy with me today. Hierarchy, I'll type it. Even my phone is tired. <laughs> so here's hierarchy. Yeah, that word that we weren't quite so sure about. Um, we'll find the underline here so you know where to open your hand. White tie, I. And now? Hierarchy, hierarchy. Hierarchy. So playing it two or three times will really start to help make an impression, especially if you're using your hand at the same time. Any other suggestions for how we're using this? When I look up this word equal, maybe, by the way, yeah? Maybe do some shadowing instead of like repeating after the speaker. Do it at the same time. Shadowing is uh, even with when you listen to uh, news report or audio tracks from some textbook. Mm -hmm. I think to get used to the rhythm and the, the, the correct pronunciation stress patterns, shadowing is important, I think. Okay, so this would be, um, one would be mirroring and the other would be shadowing, right? These are two strategies, learners. One would be something like this. Gray day equation. Gray day equation. Gray day equation. So that would be repeating afterward, or you can do it with gray day equation, equation, equation. Is that what you're getting at, Matthew? Yeah, yeah. The only That's tricky right. part is that sometimes, as you can hear here, everyone listen to equation the way Blue Canoe, and remember that the audio and it's coming from um, the the larger dictionary that we work with. So. We don't always have um, our own pronunciations in here. So listen. Equation, equation. When Dr. Barr mentioned that some of these pronunciations have, um, they don't quite sound completely natural. Uh, this one to me sounds like a robot. And the reason is that only the pitch goes up. Equation, equation, when it needs to be time-based. And so I want to replace it, <laughs> but we can do it right now. We can replace it with our hands, ready? Equation equation. So this is what's so beautifully organic is when you use your arm and you extend it, and I'll stop share here so you can see me. When you extend it, you add the human component to it. It makes it even better than the model that we provide. So equation, equation, equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I also, I, I like how you, uh, you know, the, the twisty hand thing you do, I got a background, but you know, the, uh, you know, uh, for the, especially, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, that, that holding it and that really, that gets, cause people can't hear it, especially on zoom people, you know, I teach all these classes and, and the little kids, they can't really, they don't get it. They can't hear it. Right. Well, this brings us to the second part of our conversation, which is how can we be better at hearing? the stress in a word that we're listening to. So let's say you're listening to something on the radio or something on YouTube and you want to say, oh, I, I, that's a new word for me. I want to remember it. Um, but you also know that you, you don't hear stress as easily as English speakers. So what can we do to recognize that? And uh, you know, I think that's a great idea. So Dr. Barr brought her kazoo with her. Um, I'm, you know, my children steal everything from me. So my kazoo is missing. <laughs> so I'm going to have Dr. Barr present. Um, I'd like you, I'm going to give you a word, Dr. Barr, and I'd like you to do the kazoo version of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be amazing. Good. Now, 
ba ba ba. Everybody can do this even without a kazoo. Da da da. Use your thumb kazoo. Do do do. Yeah. Do do do. It takes away oh, all oh. the sounds and leaves the music. So now I want to do a reverse search. I want to know six more words that have that sound. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. Can you write these in the um in the chat, please? Six more words that have do do do, which would be related. Fantastic. Yeah. Do do do. Do do do. And if you're a learner and you're wondering what that is, we have certain patterns, right? We have one syllable that receives stress in a word and it will create a kind of a song. So if we go down through these words, we've got related, fantastic, reminder, acrylic, important, persuasion, illusion. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Barr. Um, let's do that together. Let's flood that. Let's start where Matthew wrote and we'll stop writing. Everyone stop writing. Good. <laughs> start it related. And I think we're looking at the same thing, maybe. Here we go down the list with our hand. Related, fantastic, reminder, acrylic, important, persuasion, illusion, essential. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is building a muscle, if you want to think of it like that, a muscle for noticing stress. So the next time you hear a word that has da da da, you'll say, oh, it's that stress pattern. It fits with fantastic. And that's a great way to start noticing. It's where the note goes up or maybe down, but it's the change. So Dr. Barr, can you show us going up on a three, so da da da. And what if I say, Fantastic. Yeah. So one way or the other, it's going to be a change of the note and more time on it. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, people also say it's louder, but you have to be careful with that because you don't want to be shouting. Yeah. Longer time. Fantastic. <laughs> higher note is enough. <laughs> Any other? Good. I want to come back to some questions. So what we're doing is we're recognizing where the stress is by listening for the time and the change of pitch. And that's where the stress is. Uh, and that's actually, I would love for you to be able to pick up new words that you hear and then write them down. It doesn't always have to be from writing to speaking. Yeah, good. I'm ready to take some questions. And I know that some might have been raised at the beginning of the session. So uh, Penny, if you know of some that were raised, I'm sort of looking here, maybe not. If you have questions, I'm happy to ask, uh, you know, Karen, our people here. Yeah. Karen, um, Matthew was asking about um, the stress on a suffix. So he used redesign as an example. I thought that was interesting because it could be redesign or redesign. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have redesign. So the, you're talking about the noun, like that was a redesign of the original project. That was a redesign, right? Um, like a redo. So when, I think we do that often with the re as a, as a noun. So a redo, a redesign, or to re, a, a rewording, ah, a rewording of something. Yeah, any thoughts on that, Dr. Barr? Otherwise we can- is, uh, uh a gerund, so that's still a verb, but um, uh, redesign would be a, uh, the noun version of redesign, but I don't think there is a recover, so we only have recover as the verb, unless unless somebody makes a recover, like a slip mm -hmm. cover, right? Um, the, uh, uh, there are suffixes that uh, in English take, um, take the stress, uh, those are usually from French, which is perceived by uh, the uh, English speakers as having final stress. So engineer or entrepreneur will uh, reliably have final stress. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, with the uh, re, re, re suffix. Like, oh, sorry. Yeah, pre uh, with, with prefix, suffix, uh, uh, those will often have um, initial stress. Sorry, Matthew, say that again. 
Uh, with uh, these words, sometimes it's also the attitude of the speaker, maybe. Like he really wants to stress, like, uh, I want to redesign this or something. Right, right. contrastive stress will often change this, the, the pattern, you're right. That's right. Yeah, and that's, there's a great deal of flexibility with what the mood and the intent of the speaker. And we, we can actually sometimes create an entirely new word that's never been said that way. Um, I want to recover the furniture. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to just yeah, cover it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, I see a question here from Mia. Mia, would you like to ask your question? Yeah. Um, first of all, um, for the. I'm um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> for card game. So I have my question. Uh, I. My question is how I can play because that's very difficult for me. How you can play Blue Canoe? No, I know uh, what I need to do in Blue Canoe. <laughs> Sorry. Um, my question is in the card game. The card game? My question is, um, how I can play? Yeah, how I can play it? Oh, sure. I try it. But... That's a good question. Sometimes this. So I think your question is uh, how to play the card game. That's laggy or the cards. What? Okay. Yeah. Good. So Mia, I'm also, I'm going to show a little bit of the card game, which is color it out. And I would like it if you could go to the I, chat. I can't, I can't pass on the card game. Okay. You can't pass the card game. Okay. So great. This is because this is blue canoe support. Let's go ahead and do this and I'll have you, um, let's see if we can solve your question here. Okay. So here is our game. And it's great, everyone. What we'll do is I'll use this to model how I play color it out. And then we can see where we go from there. Okay. And Mia, I'll ask okay, you to mute yourself. So that. Okay, great. So here's color it out. Thank you for asking about the game. It's important. It's... Teachers, please know that when your students start playing blue canoe. That's <laughs> so loud. I'll go first. Good. Okay. Silver pin liquidity. Silver pin sink. Now I can talk. So when students start playing Blue Canoe, they have to complete three games of Color It Out before you can continue to play with other games. So that's part of might be what happening. What's happening you with you here, Mia, is that you've played one game and you still need to play two more. Um, so a total of three complete games. Okay, uh, let's see if I can lower my light a little bit. Oh, that's so much nicer, isn't it? So now we have a game going. And so first of all, you have to complete three games, but let's go ahead and look at how we play. So here we have um, a card that is in play. There we go. We have a card that's in play and we need to match a color either with olive sock or with silver pin. And if you forget, you can go back over to the key and look at the symbol that's confusing to you. So I could see silver pin. Okay, we can go back. And then we're going to look around for a match. And I can look through my cards or I can hit sort. Okay. And with sort, it'll give me one option, but there might be several and they're all on the left side. Okay, so here I am with some options and I will play this long word because it looks challenging. Okay, I can listen to help me say my turn. This is very valuable, especially if a word is difficult. And like Matthew mentioned earlier, you can either repeat after it and or say it with it in real time. So I'll do both of those right now. Silver pin sink, silver pin ambiguous. Silver pin think. Silver pin ambiguous. I could also try it with it. Silver, Silver pin sink. Silver, Silver pin ambiguous. ambiguous. Okay. I feel pretty confident and now I can record myself. Silver pin sink. 
silver pin ambiguous. And we give a little time for the magic nice to happen. Work. Well, I did well, pretty well. well. Silver pin ambiguous. Silver pin dinner. Okay. And so as we continue our game, um, sometimes we might get feedback. For example, if I take my turn and say silver pin dinner, silver pin until. I might get feedback or let's see. Nice one. Okay, good. I can't play, so I'll draw one. Silver pin until, silver pin busy. So the goal here is to run out of cards. And here you can see that there are five cards left that I have several cards. So when I run out of cards first, I win. And when the computer runs out, the computer wins. Mia, does this help? And does, this, does anyone else have questions about not just playing the game, but about the game? Any other questions? Um, this, but... The pro the, that's not the problem. I know how I can play it, and now I know uh, the card game is more <laughs> simple in the phone. <laughs> I go to start playing my phone because I play in the computer. But my question is, um, sometimes the cards don't want to move, and I put correct. So that's my problem but sometimes don't want to move the cards. So sometimes it's just frozen. Is that no, right? That, no, you can, I can, I can share my screen to show you. Okay. You can show us? Okay. Let me share. Got one little moment. Um, okay. okay. Ah, I see. Are you on your computer, Mia? I see. Are you on a Chromebook? Yeah. Okay, this is now the mystery has been solved. So teachers, I love that the teachers are all here with me. Um, when a student has a problem, it's a great idea to ask, what are they playing on? Um, and as Mia signs in, we'll, we'll look away for a minute. Um, it's worth mentioning that we've designed Blue Canoe first for phones. So that's very important for you to remember because Chromebooks, if you know about Chromebooks, Chromebooks are basically um, an Android, well, they're, they're Google made devices that are not phones, but they do run some, some of them run um, Android software like some of our phones. So students might be able to pull up Blue Canoe on their Chromebook, but it might not work. Okay, so Mia, I think that's what's happening with you. Okay. Let me show you what, um, in my password sometimes works. Exactly. Sorry. Good privacy practice there. Hey Mia, this is Ms. Scholl. Maybe we can try this together tomorrow. Uh, yeah, but one thing I'll let's say. Let's do that. Mia, it's a good, what I'm glad you helped us realize is it could happen to anybody, is if you try to load an app on your Chromebook, it will work to download it, but the app might not work perfectly. So uh, someday in the future, we might be able to offer an option for Chromebooks, but for now, it's, it's not so good. It won't work out so well. Okay. Mia, I want to thank you for bringing a question to us. It sounds like this is one of Heather. Thank you, Heather, also for helping Mia. We have students around the country and around the world using Blue Canoe. So it's very exciting to have uh, all of our learners of different ages join us today. Thank you. Other questions coming up? Look at Blue Canoe. Wonderful. Hey, I want to thank everybody for joining. If you do have questions, I'm, I can hang for a few more. I see some uh, familiar faces that join us each month. We do come together teachers every week for questions that we can dive in deeper into design of the activities or what have you. 
Um, we're always here. Next week is Thanksgiving week, however, in the United States. So I believe we have, especially Thursday, is the actual Thanksgiving. We will not have a session next week. However, we look forward to seeing you again uh, the following week. Okay, so everybody remain safe, healthy, uh, happy, and we'll see you again soon with all of the right kind of stress in your life. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.